Hi, welcome back to Statistics One. We're up to lecture 11, and the topic today's, for today's lecture is moderation analyses in multiple regression. So in the last le lecture, we did mediation analyses. Now we're ready for moderation analyses. This lecture is organized into three segments. In the first segment, I'll do sort of a quick and dirty example to give you the concept of moderation. Then in the second segment, I'll walk you through some sort of technical details uh, that I gloss over in the first segment uh, just for the sake of time. And then in the third segment, we'll do sort of a full-scale moderation analysis with all the details uh, down to a T. Um, so that will take a little bit longer. So in this first segment, uh, what I want to do is just a, a quick example of moderation. And again, let's keep the distinction between mediation and moderation. Um, in the last lecture, we walked through some examples of mediation. Uh, today, in this lecture, I'll walk through a couple examples of moderation. And then in the next lecture, we'll demonstrate both of those together in R. And hopefully that will really uh, solidify these two uh, topics. So again, remember the idea of mediation. If we have a relationship between two variables, x and y, then we're looking for some explanation as to why that relationship or that correlation exists. And if we can find a mediator variable that accounts for the same variance in y, then we're one step closer to understanding the mechanism that links x and y. Moderation is very different. Moderation is introducing a new variable that can completely change the picture. It's, it's sort of dominant, right? It can, it can change the relationship between x and y. So we might observe a positive correlation between x and y, introduce a moderator, and boom, it could go away. Uh, so the moderator, you can think of it as sort of controlling or influential. Um, another way I like to think about it is as, as like context effects. So in, in one context, there's a relationship between x and y, and in another, uh, it may change. Uh, again, remember my high school soccer coach, keep it simple, stupid. Um, there's only four variables here. Let's not get carried away. <laughs> um, I teach this at the grad level in Princeton, so these are my, my PhD students get all worked up over mediation and moderation. It's just four variables. Uh, but it's important to keep the details uh, straight. So today, we're going to focus on the moderator variable. I'm going to go back to this example we used in mediation. Uh, so in this example, we, our, our main predictor variable, x, was just some psychological trait, let's say extroversion. Um, and we're looking at some outcome let's say, happiness. And remember, when we did the mediation analysis, what we saw was, well, maybe the reason that people who are extroverted are happier is because they have uh, more diversity in their life experiences. So extroversion leads you to be more outgoing, experience more things, and that makes you happier. And that's what we saw in the mediation analysis. Now let's introduce a, a moderator variable, a sort of Debbie Downer in this example. Um, so we're just going to look at extroversion happiness and a moderator. So let's add in socioeconomic status. So where I'm going with this, this example, and there's this, I just made this up. I'm not saying this is, this is true, uh, but it's possible. Um, perhaps that positive relationship we saw between extroversion, diversity of life experience, and happiness, maybe that's only true for people on the higher end of the spectrum in socioeconomic status. Perhaps the picture completely flips if you're low on socioeconomic status, because perhaps your, your diversity of life experiences might not be so great, right? Um, again, this is just an example for illustration. Uh, I don't want to be uh, too negative. Um, but again, the concept here of moderation is a moderator variable, and I'm just using the letter Z to, instead of uh, X uh, to distinguish it. Um, it has sway. It has influence over the relationship between X and Y. So 
again, suppose X and Y are positively correlated, we introduce the moderator, and zap, it could just eliminate that correlation. Or zing, it could make it stronger. Um, and again, remember that in the simple regression equation, B1 is the slope relating X to Y. But beware, if a moderator variable is introduced, that is a, and it's a strong moderator, what that means is B1 isn't representative for all values of X. That is, B1 could change for different people depending on where they fall on Z. And we'll see that in the examples. Before I get to the example on extroversion and happiness, just a very quick example from my own research. It's very quick, and I think it demonstrates the concept uh, very simply. So in my own research, I'm interested in individual differences in intelligence and working memory capacity. This is like short-term memory and attention. Um, and I've been doing this for two decades, and I've seen over and over and over again that scores on our tasks that we design to measure working memory capacity, they're strongly correlated with scores on standardized tests, like the SAT. So there's a strong positive correlation between working memory capacity and, and SAT. We see this over and over again. This is not new. Uh, this was first demonstrated, I think, in the early 80s. Um, but uh, I'm now coming up on 10 years at Princeton, and it's sort of a different picture at Princeton. Um, I don't see that strong positive correlation at Princeton. Uh, and if you think about it for a, just a second, you'll understand why. Think back to descriptive statistics and the lecture on correlations, right? There's Think about Princeton University students, they're pre-selected on the basis of cognitive ability. So I don't have a random representative sample to, to do this analysis, right? In fact, what I have is a very restricted range. So if I restrict my variance, I restrict my chance for covariance. So I don't really observe a very strong correlation between these variables here at Princeton. So let me just show you that. Um, these aren't actual data, but they're close uh, to what we observe. I just sort of fudge them, so I'm not showing you real data. Um, here's sort of a typical uh, scatter plot showing scores on working memory capacity tasks. They're typically scored just as a percentage, so zero to, to one. It's like how many items people can remember. And then the total SAT score. Uh, for those of you who are not in the US, uh, the SAT is just a standardized test used for college admissions. Uh, there are three sections now, and when I took it, there were only two. Um, and the maximum score you can get is 800 in each section. So the maximum score you can get is 2,400. Uh, so that's on the, on the y-axis here. And what we see is a nice moderate to strong positive correlation between working memory capacity and SAT. And as I said, that's been, that's been illustrated over and over again. Um, not surprising. But what tends to happen here, and not just here, I've done this um, in, a, in, a, in a collaborative study uh, with people at Columbia University in New York as well, and we see the same thing. Um, you have very weak correlations between working memory and SAT in Ivy League schools. And again, because these students are pre-selected on the basis of SAT or cognitive ability, um, what you can see in this scatter plot is look at how high these SAT scores are. Again, forgive me if you're not in the U.S. and, and this scale doesn't mean so much, but this is high. <laughs> these are smart kids. Um, so I don't have the full range of SAT, and that's why it's restricted. So this is sort of an artifactual example of moderation, but it's a nice, clean, simple way to introduce the concept. The interpretation here is that the type of university moderates the relationship between working memory capacity and standardized test scores. Okay? Um, how do we do that in multiple regression? Well, we have to add in a moderator variable and a, what I'm going to call a product term. So we have our simple regression equation here. Then we add in a moderator variable. In our example going forward, I'm going to go back to the 
extroversion, happiness, socioeconomic status example. And to see if there's moderation, we just take the product of those two predictors. <clears throat> if the effects are just additive, then this third predictor won't be significant. But if they're over-additive or under-additive, meaning they're interactive, they're moderating, um, then it will be significant. Again, we could represent that graphically, like we did for the mediation models. Uh, not quite as interesting as the mediation models, but uh, we could represent it graphically. So we have x, z, and the product, all predicting y. We could run this in just one regression equation. So in, in R, just use the LM function, linear model, predict y from these three predictors. We actually need to create a new column in our data frame to represent the product of x and z. So as I said, I'm going to call that just product. We can call it whatever when we, we do this in R. We have to actually create a new variable. And I'll, I'll cover this in more detail when I talk uh, more comprehensively about the general linear model. But what we're doing here is we're tricking the general linear model. The general linear model is this equation. It's assuming that all the predictors are additive, right? Um, but what we're testing here is for a non-additive result. So we're just tricking it by creating a new variable that's actually the product. R doesn't know that. The GLM doesn't know that, right? But we do. Um, so if that product comes out to be significant, then we know we have something that's not additive. OK, back to the example. Again, just assume, I assume we had 188 subjects. I, I just made up these data in R. Uh, this one's completely made up, not based on any research. Um, and to simplify things, again, in this first segment, I want to do a simple example. So I just coded SES as high and low. Uh, we typically don't want to do that. We want to keep uh, a continuous variable. Uh, but you'll see in the next segment, there's a lot of technical details when we have uh, continuous predictors in moderation. So here are the results. Uh, again, I'm just giving you sort of the overview of this example um, before adding the product term. So I'll refer to these effects here going forward in moderation analyses and when we, later in the course when we do analysis of variance. Uh, I'll refer to these first effects as main effects. You might hear other people refer to them as first order effects. Uh, these are the effects before adding in the moderation. So just what's the main effect of extroversion on happiness? What's the main effect of socioeconomic status on happiness? Uh, right here, money can't buy happiness right here. <laughs> I was going to say love. Um, love, happiness goes together. Um, but it's com completely zero. Okay? I, I made that up. Um, I made it to come out that way. Um, and what you see now is extroversion is not a very strong predictor of happiness, and it's not significant in this, uh, in this analysis. That's different from the last lecture where we saw a positive correlation. That's because I've added in people with a range of socioeconomic status. Uh, before, I, I, I didn't say anything about that variable. What that means is there must be a moderating effect. So let's look at the results after adding the product term. What we see now is this strong coefficient in front of SES, and I'll explain that in a moment, and a pretty strong coefficient in front of the product term. And in fact, it is significant. I ran this through R. Uh, and the p-value is less than 0.05, you can claim that this is statistically significant. But let's look at it graphically. This is a little bit easier to wrap your head around if you look at it graphically and start to do some calculations in your head. So the product term is a little difficult to interpret, right? Because what, is, what are these coefficients mean again? Well, it's for a one-unit change in x. It's the predicted change in y, right? That's easy if you're saying extroversion. So for a one unit increase on the extroversion scale, it's my predicted change on the happiness scale. But what does it mean when it's a one unit change in the product of extroversion and SES? Then it gets a little harder. 
But let's break it down. So imagine that you're low SES, you were coded with zero. Well, then the calculations actually become pretty easy because if SES is zero, then that drops out. And so does that. So all you're left with, if you're low SES, is your predicted score on Y is 3.88 plus extraversion times negative two. So what that's saying is if you're low SES, there's a negative relationship between extroversion and happiness. That's the opposite of what we saw in the last lecture, right? Now let's look at what, it, what the numbers look like if you're high SES, if you have a one for SES. So if you have a one for SES, then you're gonna take, again, that intercept, but then you're gonna subtract 1.69, so the intercept is lower, uh, but then you're gonna add this 0.47 because it's the product of SES and extroversion. But then you have to subtract out 0.2. But 0.47 is 0.27 greater than 0.2, so it's a positive relationship for people with high SES. The best way to illustrate this, of course, is just scatter plots, right? This is again, keep it simple, stupid. It's, it's just two correlations, right? Um, one for people with low SES, one for people with high SES. And again, I completely made up these data to look like this. It's a perfect crossover interaction. Uh, what you see is that slight negative correlation for low SES, slight high correlation, or po sorry, positive correlation for high SES. The other thing to notice, and this comes through here in the intercept, and this value for SES, again, hoping to sort of make these more meaningful for you, those just correspond to the intercepts. So you can see that the intercept for the high SES is, group is much lower than the intercept for the low SES. That's the 3.88 right there. Again, this is a simple example, very easy interpretation. All we've demonstrated is that SES moderates the relationship between extroversion and happiness. And the moral of the story to take away from moderation analyses is, is an important one. It is the, the picture can change literally when you add a new variable. So you might think you know, there's a strong correlation between X and Y, but wait, we didn't consider this third variable. Now you consider that third variable and the context changes and the relationship changes completely. Uh, that's always possible when you're doing these types of studies. Uh, and that's one of the limitations of these kinds of observational studies.